At this time, please join the concert choir and women's ensemble in singing the national anthem. Battalion Commander, Cadet Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Abigail Tober. Good morning. I personally like to thank you all for coming here to remember the tragic events that occurred 14 years ago. Being only three years old at the time, I didn't understand why our nation was under attack. I didn't understand why someone would take the lives of 2,753 innocent Americans. But I do remember how our country came together after that morning. This terrorist attack was meant to crush the spirit of Americans. But in reality, it strengthened the unity of our country. We mourned together for the firefighters, the police officers, the first responders, the military personnel, and the heroic citizens, all of whom sacrificed their lives to save others that were trapped in the World Trade Center. 
Even as the whole nation watched as the Twin Towers began to fall, emergency response personnel were there, running into the buildings to save lives. The events of September 11th caused us to promise that we will never forget. This is why our memorial held here at the flagpole is so important. There are generations now that were born after 9-11, and the only way we can honor the fallen as they gave the ultimate sacrifice is to recognize them. That is the 2,753 civilians, the 344 firefighters, the 23 New York Police Department officers, the 37 Port Authority officers, the 227 Americans aboard the hijacked planes, as well as the 55 military personnel and the 125 citizens at the Pentagon the same day. And to recognize the 4,049 American troops upholding our nation's freedom who lost their lives fighting during the War on Terror. The War on Terror is still going on today, with different villains threatening from outside and inside our country. It will be up to each of us to decide how we react to those threats, facing the future with confidence rather than with fear. Today, we thank all those who have taken a proactive approach to answering the call of service. These heroes are on the front line protecting our freedom every day and making us all able to pursue our dreams. Thank you for ensuring our present safety and our future freedom as a community and country. God bless the United States of America. At this time, our guest speaker, Mr. Hazuda, will share his thoughts on this event. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, Sergeant Major Timothy Godra and Colonel Loudermilk and the whole entire JRTC program and uh, Hannah Kane for inviting me here today to speak. I'd also like to thank the student staff and everybody else in attendance for having me. I, I'm, it's an absolute honor to be able to speak this morning. And I think it's really important that the JRTC program keeps its tradition alive uh, because there's a lot we can learn from 9-11, and I'd like to share personally what I maybe can pass on that I learned from that tragic day. At the time, I was a student, and I was at the University of Pittsburgh, and on my way to class that morning, on the radio, I heard that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. At that time, it was assumed to be an accident, but by the time I had gotten to class, our professor had gotten word that a second plane had hit, and at that point, it was pretty obvious that there was a terroristic attack on our homeland. And he dismissed us from class and I went walking through Oakland and there was gridlock traffic as everybody was scrambling to get home or find their loved ones. And I sort of just walked around for a little while and just took it all in. It was something that I had never experienced before in my life. And I found myself in a student union building where some t televisions were and as I saw the smoke billowing out of trade centers. Somehow right then, as I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, you just knew that something had changed. That the way the world was before that day was gone. And I know those images that we saw throughout the day, for the people that are old enough in the crowd here, will never leave us. And I understand that for the first time now, students coming into high school weren't even alive when this event happened, and they've only lived in a post-9-11 world. So I'd like to pass down maybe a lesson I've learned from that day to those younger students. I've discussed with my students before that for some reason in society we're obsessed with us versus them. We draw circles around ourselves and as a way to identify ourselves by not only identifying who we are, but who we aren't. You know, the girls in the school will tell you that the boys are not as good. But the boys and girls seniors will tell you that the underclassmen are just not as cool as them. But then the high schoolers will tell you that the middle schoolers aren't as cool as them. But at least they're all from Beaver and they're not from those other schools. And then those other schools get together and say, at least we're not those schools from Pittsburgh. And then the whole region says, well, at least we're Steeler fans and we're not those folks from Baltimore. That's what we do with ourselves. We draw these lines and these divisions. But on 9-11, for the first time in my life, in a way that I never saw before, all those divisions just dissolved. They disappeared. 
And it makes me wonder how, over time, that fades. And I wonder how we can face all the, just face the world and all the problems in the world if we're divided at home. Patriotism is worth something. This group that we put ourselves in as Americans is something that's worth belonging to. And it should be more important than some of the smaller groups that we often count ourselves in. But it's a shame it took a tragedy for America to shine. It's a shame it took a tragedy for me to see America at its best. And I guess my message to you younger kids here is that maybe we should strive for that all the time. Maybe we should put positive energy into the world. Try to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. You know, you can't control the world, but you can control yourself. And it takes individuals to change a group. Society doesn't change unless individuals take that responsibility upon themselves to push that change forward. And kids, if you need an example of people that put a positive energy into the world, take a look around you this morning. The men and women in military uniforms, the firemen, the policemen, the paramedics, all of them have dedicated their lives to helping other people. The administration, your teachers, the staff, they've dedicated their lives to helping other people. Your parents have dedicated their lives to helping you with the sacrifices that they've made. And, and you, as you go forward in your life, you don't have to work in a profession that is dedicated to helping other people to carry that out in your everyday life. So I would encourage you to do that as you go forward. And on this morning when we're remembering the tragic events of 9-11, perhaps we can take such a negative experience and turn it into a positive reminder to work towards peace, understanding, tolerance, and forgiveness. Thank you, and God bless America. Thank you, Mr. Azuda. At this time, please join the concert choir and the Women's Ensemble, led by Susan Matowski, in singing My America.
Everyone, please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray you continue to watch over our soldiers, firefighters, police officers, and emergency workers that risk their lives daily to defend our freedom and protect our country. Please also be with their loved ones as they too share in this sacrifice of service. In your precious name we pray, amen. This concludes our memorial ceremony. Thank you for your attendance. Please take the time to recognize our local service men and women along with local police, fire, and emergency departments. Following our ceremony, there will be refreshments in the cafeteria for our first responders, service men, and women. Thank you. Because it reflects on America and not the Twin Towers and all the people who fought that day to try to save. Yeah, because it remembers the people that died. I think this event is very important because if we don't remember history, we are doomed to repeat it.